Hello, everyone. I am Lexi, and I'm the Marketing Campaigns Manager here at Later, or Lexi from LaterCon. And I'm so excited to be hopping out of the chat for a bit and coming on stage to introduce you to our incredible lineup and sit on our panel for this next session. So there's a lot of faces on screen here today, a lot of wonderful faces. So I just want to give a bit of backstory. So a few months ago, we connected with three Later customers to find out what they've been up to on social and talk to them about their upcoming campaign plans. So after our conversation, Evan, Jara, and myself took a deep dive into what they shared and put together some tailored advice to help them take their campaigns to the next level. So today we're bringing those wonderful businesses back. We're introducing them to our live expert panel who will be sharing their personalized recommendations here on stage for the first time today. So grab your pen and notebook. Our panelists serve out to deliver their tips to help our businesses and you build a successful campaign across all of the platforms. So before we get started, we have a jam-packed session, but I just wanted to take a minute to let our panelists go ahead and introduce themselves. So Jara, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Lexi. Howdy, everyone. <laughs> My name is Jared Fosterfell, also known as Jared Bean. I am a social media coach. I am a content creator. My main goal, my main mission is to transform the way that you show up on social media and really use it as a positive and a powerful tool for your business. Jared is also the video queen. You have to check out her TikTok or Reels. She is just all over it. And Evan, take it away. Yes. My name is Evan Marshall. I'm the VP of Partnerships for Black Menswear. Um, our mission is to change the narrative how Black men are portrayed in the media. Um, that is us. That's amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Evan, for sharing. So I want to make sure to give all of our businesses a chance to introduce themselves. But what we're going to do is actually just take it one by one because we want to give them enough time to go over everything with us. So Renee and Anne, we're going to start with you. But while we're shifting, Renee and Anne, if you want to just dive right in, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your business, what you guys have been up to on social and really just like what you're looking for for your next campaign. Yeah, so I'll take it from here. Hi everybody, my name is Anne. I'm one of the co-owners of Victus Coffee and I also uh, front all of the marketing for the brand. So in 2020 and 2021, our main goals were growing our audience organically on social media and showcasing a new brand identity. We spent a lot of 2020 and 2021 really making sure our mission was understood and compact and cohesive. And you'll see it on our bags. Ta-da. says, great coffee fuels great causes. That's our little motto. Uh, so moving forward, we're finally ready to, you know, put our foot to the gas pedal and start making some sales and conversions via social media. Uh, we want sales of our subscriptions. We have coffee subscriptions. We have a programs where it's you can buy two or more bags and get free shipping. Uh, however, one of the things we're running into with being a small business is the two main pain points that every single small business has, a lack of time and a lack of resources. Uh, Renee is a prominent roaster in Connecticut, so he's doing so much roasting and operations. I'm making sure that our orders get out the door and other operations. So we haven't really had the time or the resources, you know, thousands of dollars to spend on an ad campaign here and there to um, you know, really dedicate to an ad campaign. So we're really looking forward to you know, getting your feedback, understanding what we can do moving forward. I love that. Thank you both for sharing so much. Jara, I know you had some really great insights, especially when it comes to messaging. So I wanna just let you take the stage first. I'm just going to dive right in because I have so much that I want to tell you and I know we have limited time. So the biggest thing that stood out to me is when I was going through the brief, which us panelists got uh, prior to today and also your website, I felt that I learned more about Victus Coffee than compared to the last three months of really diving deep into your Instagram posts. So through the brief, through the website, I was learning about your mission, your personality, your ethos, your passion, which is so clear. Like y'all's are full of purpose and soul, but I now want to experience that as well as through your social media, because I'm not really feeling that same kind of um, purpose and, and mission that I got through those other materials. So two tangible pieces of action, which I think are going to support your goal of sales and also your, your social media strategy as a whole are as follows. So number one, I want you 
to turn up the volume on messaging specifically around your coffee. What makes it great and also what sets Victus apart from the rest. So I see this right now as a really big gap. I don't see this type of content coming through in your Instagram. I think the biggest emphasis that I'm seeing right now is on your philanthropic efforts, which is wonderful. I want you to continue posting about that because I know how near and dear that is to your heart and to the brand. But to me, that alone isn't going to sell your coffee, especially considering your target audience who really cares about high quality coffee. Therefore, they need to know about the coffee and how freaking awesome it is. So what's exciting to me is that the answers are already there. Like looking at the brief that you sent us, I, I copied and pasted a couple things. So I had them in front of me. Um, and these are the things that right away I'm like, Y'all just need to dive in and talk about this on Instagram and, and all the social channels. That your specialty grade coffee, an award uh, winning roaster. Uh, I love the line where you said there will always be cheaper brands, more convenient coffee options. It's always pertinent to communicate the benefits associated with choosing a high quality specialty grade coffee such as ours. The fantastic natural flavors that you never discount your coffee. To me, that's really interesting and kind of perks my ear up as I, I definitely think I'm your target audience. Audience. So all of these ideas and more can be turned into individual posts in order to drive home the value of your brand and what sets you apart. As you said, in your own words, the coffee space is crowded. So we can't just whisper these things or sort of assume that people are going to know them. I want you just to yell it from the rooftops and be proud because I know you're proud. I want to see that through your Instagram. The second piece of advice that I have for you is to create valuable educational messaging in order to create community that then turns into customers. So on social media these days for any business, whether your service business or product business, you can't only talk about your brand and you can't only talk about your product. There needs to be other content that gives people a reason to follow you. So right now on your Instagram, I see a mix between product content, some brand content, but as we just talked about, that can be improved. And also some fluffy captions, kind of like raise your hand if you're not ready for summer to end. So what we're lacking in is valuable educational content, which builds community. And there's so much you can do here around coffee, just off the top of my head, how to make the perfect cup of coffee, coffee versus espresso, explain what roasting is and how it works, what makes coffee high quality, your top picks for your coffee machine, how to steam your milk. There's so much here that is really fascinating to people who are interested in coffee and really care about your brand. So that's what I got for you. Amazing. Evan, I'm going to let you go next. Yeah, thank you for that. I mean, first of all, kind of picking back off of what Jared said, like I'm, I think I'm your ideal customer as well. Don't know if you guys are already doing this. I know you guys have laters planned, but I don't know if you guys are currently in the process of setting up a 90 day content calendar. Um, if not, I would encourage you to do so. And I say that with a lot of brands that I work with. And what that enables you to do is to test out themes, copy, um, types of content, and really gather audience insights that you can, then, you can then utilize for data points in terms of understanding, replicating that type of content that speaks with them the most and resonates the most with them. So for example, you can create a weekly tracker of your post performance. And then at each 30-day marker, host an internal conversation on how the content performed, um, kind of look at the impressions, look at the deep engagements, such as shares and saves. I'd make those your main KPIs. Um, shares primarily because this means someone shared the content with somebody else. That's me saying, hey, I like this so much. Hey, Lexi, go check this out. That's more than just me liking that, right? Or me saving that means I'm going to come back to that in a later date. That Whether it's the image or the messaging or the discount, no matter what it was, that means there's a reason I'm putting this in my archive for me to circle back to it. Um, in addition to that, at each 30-day marker, you can kind of assess the type of content that's working for your brand and then continue to replicate that. One thing I see a lot of times uh, with small businesses, like they kind of like throw things at the wall, but your audience will really tell you what's working best for them if you're just utilizing this 90-day method. And at each marker, you can say, okay, product shots worked better than this versus lifestyle shots worked better over here. And then you kind of utilize that, okay, let's go about replicating the lifestyle shots more on a regular basis because you know that's what the audience is engaging with. Um, once you can do that, then you can kind of get into uh, paid advertising. I know uh, some smaller businesses are a little bit afraid of paid advertising, but the value add behind that is you can do a smaller budget. I mean, I say small, you can even do something like $250 or $500 a month. But the key to that 
is develop is utilizing custom audiences. So on Facebook and Instagram, you can develop custom audiences off of website traffic. You can do that off a of customer list. So if you have a newsletter subscriber, if you have, um, you know, gift cards, things of that nature, or you can even do it off of uh, people that have engaged with your posts. So that's three different types of custom audiences you can get. So you can set up a pixel on your website. So then those are people that are already loyal consumers for you. You can upload about that. And the best thing about all this, then you can then create lookalike audiences off of those three types. Um, so those would be my two points. And then finally, um, I would say your content is great. Uh, one thing kind of speaking of what Jared said, one thing I don't really get from it um, is just a consistent look. Um, whether it's like, if you look at some of the other coffee pages, like Nespresso or La Coloma, like they have a consistent look and feel in terms of, not just in terms of the brand voice, but what they overall aesthetic is. Um, I would kind of suggest you looking at, and I think starting with your 90 day content calendar, once you know what the, uh, your audience wants to see, then that will be able to establish that consistent look and feel that you're looking for. So hope that was helpful. We have so much more. I'm going to figure out how we can deliver all of this to you later on because we have so many different takeaways that we've put together. But we do have to move on to our next small business. So Renee and Anne, thank you so much for sharing with us today, letting us take a deep dive into your business. We are going to move things over to you, Sam. So Sam, if you want to share a little bit about what you've been up to on social and some of your campaign goals coming up this year. Yeah. Yeah, so I am Sam. I lead marketing at Peace Fans. We are located in Seattle and we have three main businesses. So we um, repair and restore vintage Volkswagen Vanagons, those dreamy pop top camper vans that you see on road trips. Um, we also have a fleet of rental vans for people to explore the Pacific Northwest in. And then we convert and sell a modern version of the Volkswagen van again, that is the Mercedes Metris. So those are kind of the three things that we do. Um, a campaign that we're looking at right now is doing a brand new road trip itinerary for all of our customers. So we have a plethora of road trip itineraries on, that live on our website and a private kind of renter portal for some of our customers. And we're looking at doing this Mount Rainier itinerary for the springtime, Mount Rainier closes in the winter, and just finding ways to get this out to people in the most effective way on social and just through marketing in general. I am from the Pacific Northwest. I know exactly what like Mount Rainier looks like, what to expect going there. I read, I was reading in your brief, just wanting to go to this mountain and immediately I was drawn to it. Um, so, my first, first main tip is just making this trip planning as simple as possible for potential travelers. Like I said, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. I know exactly what my, Mount Rainier looks like. It used to be outside my window. I know what it's going to be like getting there and what happens when you pull into the park. But I also live in California. I can guarantee someone here would just think like Big Scary Mountain. I have no idea what the park looks like. Where is this in relation to Seattle? That's like always the first question. Um, so the more obvious you can really make things, the better. That's kind of just in general with all of your trips. So some things I noticed is that your feed, especially just on within Reels and um, your Instagram feed, it's not very graphic heavy. You have a lot of beautiful, beautiful images, but I think there's an opportunity to add some graphics into there. Doing things like outlining the trip, um, there's potential opportunities to partner with a designer for this and kind of cross promote that. Repurposing some of your long form content. So your blog has so much incredible content. I was reading through it all last night, um, but you don't necessarily want to always drive your audience back to your blog. So I saw a lot of your Instagram captions were like, check out our blog post and you're driving them back to your website. I think with planning these trips, you really want to provide all of the resources right there. Like Instagram has built out so many incredible features that really you can like put everything on this page. Like this can kind of be your mini website. TikTok can be driving back to it. TikTok, you can do educational content over there really just like throwing that in on every single platform and not really relying solely on the blog and driving path traffic back to that. Instagram also released an amazing guides feature that not a lot of companies are tapping into, but I think this would be so great for your brand. Um, here you can actually link back to some of your blog posts, but you can also just provide a lot of the content right in there. So things that are highlighted in the blog, just taking some of those, breaking it down into more easy to digest posts, I think is going to be absolutely invaluable for you guys. I don't want to talk too much more. So Jared, did you want to hop in next? 
Yes, please. <laughs> I would love to. Such great points, Lexi. Um, I have uh, three main things that I would like to offer up, and those are looking at Instagram as its own content ecosystem cutting the fluff and really beefing up the substance and then leaning into something that I call on the product content and around the product content in order to sell. So the first tip that I have for you looking at Instagram as its own self-sufficient ecosystem is actually what Lexi was just talking about. I noticed the same thing out of your last nine posts, four of them are pushing to the blog. Now asking someone to go to the blog is really a big ask. People like to stay in the app. So I really want you to start to think of each post as its own piece of content that is self-sufficient on its own and not just necessarily a strategy for blog promotion. I think people are going to get tired of always being asked to visit the blog versus just being able to have all the information they need right here, right now. Number two, cutting the fluff and beefing up on the substance. So also looking at the last nine posts, as we mentioned, four of those were pushing to the blog and four of those are what I call fluff Post. For example, a one-liner dreaming of our next getaway. Now, fluff is okay, like every now and then, you're just kind of like sprinkling it in there every so often. But to me, fluff is kind of the equivalent of posting just to post. So what I'd like to kind of shift here is thinking every single time you're posting where perhaps you're not selling, it's an opportunity to educate, inspire, or entertain, essentially to benefit the person who is consuming the content. A fluffy caption doesn't really benefit a fluffy fluffy caption doesn't really create community or connection or sales hence not really wanting to have too much fluff in your content and really putting a heavy emphasis on that educate inspire entertain the third thing i have for you is this idea of the on the product content versus around the product content for selling so i kind of categorize selling posts into two buckets and the on the product is more of a hard sell think of this as like straight up direct here's how to buy this here's how to sign up link in bio that type of thing around is more of a soft sell and that's where you're really showing the value of what it is that you offer or sell and helping a potential customer kind of understand not not just what you sell, but why they should care about it and how it's going uh, to benefit their life. So linking it back to the specific campaign, for your road trip itinerary, I don't want the content to link back to the blog. I want it to fully exist in all of its glory on Instagram so that if someone never visits your blog, they can still benefit from it. Um, I would also like you to think of the posts that aren't selling to, uh, are they gonna educate, inspire, or entertain to really de deliver on that uh, value and kind of cutting the fluff, creating guides as Lexi mentioned, and also how Peace Fans is what you need for this specific road trip, so really focusing in on how you can deliver content that's on the product and around the product on being how to rent buy the nuts and bolts and around perhaps being a little bit more of some of the things you mentioned in your brief we are the experts we have you covered road trip with ease get back to your roots explore our backyard customer stories testimonials reviews etc thank you Jara. evan did you want to pop in sure, yes we'd love to i'll kind of i know we're, time's running a little bit hot so i'll kind of keep this Sure. So first and foremost, uh, I love the features of the people with the brand. I love the variety of the content. One suggestion I have is on the overall content to maximize campaigns is you know, go a deeper level of connectivity with your consumers in the form of IG takeovers. Um, I would encourage you to utilize consumers, brand loyalists who have social followings uh, to do IG takeovers by creating content on the Peace Fans IG page. You can have them do the forms of IG stories. Uh, you can have them document their trip and drive followers and traffic from their pages to the peace fans handle um you know kind of think like more like a micro influencer play in that way driving authenticity and engagement um a secondary way i could you i think you could do this would be ig live so whether it's yourself or other people that work for the company uh you can kind of share some uh you can share some places you encourage people to visit along the mount rainier trip so like, i know you guys are really big and highlighting the coffee shops and local restaurants. What if you went and did an IG Live with them and had the people who run those coffee shops, run those restaurants, kind of give you a first person point of view about it. So like I know from my point of view, if I was driving along and I saw you host a conversation with them when I walked through the door, I would feel like I already know that person already. So it's a level, deeper level of connectivity uh, with them. Um, second for that, Regarding your question specifically on Reels, I think your viewership number on Reels is actually pretty strong. But I would say the issue where you're probably finding some it, um, some um, holdup is the type of content you are putting on Reels. Um, looking at your feed, it kind of looks like 
uh, the type of content that you're utilizing in Reels would be better fit for traditional in-feed video or an IGTV video or, an, or YouTube versus Reels. Uh, you got to remember like the real algorithm and the real platform, um, and I'm sure Jerry can attest to this too, is more in the vein of a TikTok uh, where the video should have short, quick transitions, uh, be on trend, text overlay, music and things of that nature. Because uh, really the key to making a successful reel is getting it to end up on the Explorer page. And obviously once you're on the Explorer page, you get access to about 50% more on Instagram accounts that are used for discovery each month than you normally would. Um, so that would be my suggestion. So just, yeah, hashtags, text overlays. Um, I just, and I think what you guys are doing great. I just, for I, for the connectivity, just deeper level, IG lives, IG stories with some of your followers, and then uh, just really being more on trend with what you're doing with Reels. Yes, thank you all. That's great. And thank you so much, Sam, for sharing with us. I think like we're going to have a lot of people sold on, on getting their next camper van for their next vacation soon. John, I know everyone's probably very curious to hear what Hascafa is. I think I see you drinking it over there. Okay. Too. No, it looks like it looks like that's an optical <laughs> okay. illusion. I saw purple. Uh, that's just a purple. <laughs> That's a purple glass. It's, it's on brand. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try and talk. At, I'll try and talk at one point five speed. Um, okay. So Haskafa <laughs> is a UK and Canadian-based company, and we grow. We grow a super berry. It's called the Haskat berry, and we grow it on our farm, which is over in Nova Scotia. We've got about a hundred acres of uh, a Haskat crop growing over there, and uh, uh, we've been doing. We've, we've been growing for about seven or eight years. So. What is a Haskat berry? Well, it, it, it's this thing, if you can see it. Um, there's a the camera. It, so it's like an elongated blueberry. We're primarily a direct to consumer. We sell online. Um, we sell online from the UK, but we ship out worldwide. Um, and we've been doing this for just under two years in the UK. And over the last 20 months, we've been slowly educating uh, uh, our audience and growing our audience through our multi layered story that we're telling. Uh, the, the huge challenges that we have are nobody's heard of the Haskat berry, nobody can pronounce it, uh, and nobody's heard of anthocyanins either. And then, you know, getting people to learn about why anthocyanins are important and why they're good for you uh, is, is critical. So education is key. We've been exploring certain pain points recently, um, but I'd love to hear from uh, the team. You Thank you so away. much, John. I think that's like the perfect, like the perfect style. Like it tastes good and it turns everything purple. Like I'm sold. <laughs> Jarrah, I know you had some, like, as we're kind of talking about this, like nobody knows what the Hescafe Berry is. Jarrah, I know you had some really great points about that and just like general messaging. Love to hear from yeah, you first. For sure. So. Right, right on cue, this idea that nobody has heard of the Hiscat Berry, I know that's something you're super focused on. And though I think that education is really important and it's something that you should continue, I think it should be balanced with other types of content and messaging. Because right now, looking at your most recent post, just kind of that snapshot right when I go to your profile, it kind of feels more like a Hiscat Berry account, not Hiscapa the brand. So my big question for you to sort of self-reflect in order to change things up in terms of how you're showing up on social media and your content ideas is asking yourself the question, how can I show content that um, brings Hiscapa more as part of a lifestyle, part of my lifestyle? And so I think this can come through in a couple of ways, showing more of the application of it, which I know you've done before, but let's pump the volume up on that, food, recipes, I also think having less of a polished look. Right now, everything feels very highly curated, kind of sometimes almost stock photo-like, but sort of puts this barrier between me as the potential customer or follower and you. I want more social proof. I know you have tons of five-star amazing reviews, so let's see those come through. And also incorporating more videos and reels. I haven't seen any uh, reels pop up on your page, and I know that's going to be hugely beneficial for you. And then I have a lot to say, but I'll just do one other point so everyone else has time to chat. Um, this idea of focusing more on the benefits of your product versus the features. So the features to me is what your product is versus the benefits is how your product makes someone feel or how it benefits or transforms their life. So right now, looking through all of your content on Instagram, there's a really heavy emphasis on the features of the Hiscat Berry. Vegan, GMO, gluten-free, antioxidants, vitamin C, packed with nutrition. I would now like to also see and have you lean heavy 
heavier into why do I need Piscapa in my life? What is it going to do to help me? How is it going to make me feel? And really tapping into that ideal client avatar, your target audience, and asking yourself, how is this product going to benefit their life? And then really speak to that and bring that to life in your content. Evan, I know you had some great stuff about just like helping Escapa just reach more of their target audience. I'd love to hear hear a bit about that. Yeah, um, a couple of different feedback. So just in terms of first and foremost in the target audience, I think similar feedback to what I shared uh, with Victus Coffee earlier in terms of doing the retargeting on the ads, I think you can definitely be focused on that um, as well. Uh, it's really focusing on the custom audiences and the type of platforms. I really think you should explore TikTok. Uh, because a lot of times people think TikTok is just Gen Z, uh, but actually 46% of the audience is actually older than 25. Uh, 21 million of them are parents themselves. And I know you mentioned that was your core demographic were women uh, in that 30 year old age group. Uh, they average spend about 52 minutes per day on there, which is a long time. That's longer than Instagram. That's longer than Facebook because you're actually scrolling and sitting there and watching video content versus just scrolling over an image. Uh, one of the things I think then you can really focus on, their content pillars really are relatable, fun, um, aspirational, like status and influence, inspirational, which is trailblazer, which is what you all, and informative. You check all four of those. You're aspirational um, in terms of being a higher end product. You're inspirational because you tapped into this berry market that nobody is familiar with, but now that how it tastes better. It's informative because you guys are providing the health benefits to it. And you're relatable as well because you're tapping into the juice and smoothie concept that everybody typically likes to enjoy. So I would encourage you to look in the TikTok as being a platform as well. And another great thing about that, because they have the For You page, because of the algorithm, I'm sure you all seen it, you don't need to have 20,000, 40,000, a million followers to get a million views on TikTok. You could have 500 followers and get a million people to see it. it happens all the time. So it's less about that engagement. So uh, that would be a platform I would look into for you all as well. Thank you so much. That was a million dollars um, worth of advice. <laughs> and I've got it all down there. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. It has been wonderful having you all here. First, I want to say thank you to the businesses that joined us today. So great getting to know a bit more about you. We're all going to be getting in our van trips, drinking our Victus in the morning and our Hescap at night. And thank you so much to, your, to our expert panelists. We've loved having you here today. And thank you to everyone joining LaterCon. We're almost out of time, so we're going to say goodbye. Goodbye.